and welcome back to my YouTube channel, History of Us. I am so excited that you are here with me today. I know I mentioned in my last video that in this video I was going to continue telling the history of immigration to the United States, but I found something that I would rather talk about and I think that you would rather listen to, and that is the stories of various indigenous Americans in the United States. I would like to dedicate this video to my history teacher who inspired me to do this. Thank you so much. And let's get started. The first indigenous American I will be talking about is Sacagawea, someone you are probably somewhat familiar with. Her name means bird woman, and she was born in either 1789 or 1790. The exact date is unknown. She was born in present-day Idaho as part of the Shoshone tribe. She had two brothers and a sister. In 1880, she was captured by the Minitree people when she was about 10 or 11, and she was traded to Toussaint Carbonneau, who ended up marrying her. He also had another indigenous wife. I'm not sure if he had married her before Sacagawea or after. <clears throat> Eventually, he was invited to join the Lewis and Clark expedition, which was an expedition sent by Thomas Jefferson to explore the Louisiana Territory. Sacagawea went on the Lewis and Clark expedition when she was only 16, as her husband had joined them, and she was someone who could translate for them for the, to the Shoshone people because they were going to need to trade for horses. At the time that she joined them, she also had a young son who was named, named Jean Baptiste. You may know him as Pomp, which was the name that Clark gave them. This whole group was known as the Corpse of Discovery. Going through this journey, once, when the group was crossing the Missouri River, one of their boats filled with water. Sacagawea managed to catch almost all the supplies that had fallen out of the boat, including vital books, medicines, and papers. Eventually, in August 1805, Sacagawea finally returned to her Shoshone homeland and discovered that their new chief was her brother. She helped Lewis and Clark negotiate with her people so that they could get the horses they needed to cross the mountains to get to Oregon. She became one of the first Americans to see the Pacific Ocean. But, well, one of the first European Americans, the first European Americans would have been Mary Weather Lewis and his companion Clark, and she would have been one of the first Native Americans who wasn't native to that land to see the Pacific Ocean. She had traveled 4,500 miles carrying her baby on the journey there and the journey back, but she wasn't paid at all. On December 20th, 1812, she died. That's a potential day for a death. We're not exactly sure. She died after she gave birth to her daughter, Lizette. The next person I'll be talking about is someone you are also probably familiar with, Pocahontas. She was born in 1595. She was the daughter of Wahoo Seneca, who was the main chief in the Powhatan Confederacy. She was one of his favorite daughters out of his 26 children. I know you've heard from the Disney movie that she helped protect John Smith when he was going to be executed, but it is likely that he wasn't really actually going to be executed and she simply helped him return to the Jamestown settlers after he was captured by her father's brother. And she also helped convince her father to be kind to the Jamestown settlers and often brought them food herself when they were struggling. Unfortunately, the English didn't necessarily reciprocate this kindness. They captured her in 1614 and ransomed her to her father. Even though he offered to be peaceful in exchange for her return, the English kept her in order to manipulate her father. As a teenager, she was baptized as Rebecca and married to John Rawl, even though it is possible she was already in a relationship with a Powhatan man. She had a son with Rolf named Thomas Rolf. Eventually, her, Thomas, and John went to England, where she became famous for her beauty. Unfortunately, she died when she was 22 before she could return to America. Alright, the next person I'm going to be talking about is Tecumseh. He was born in 1768 in a Shawnee chief. He united various indigenous tribes to fight for their freedom and culture. 
He was a military genius whose ideas are still studied in many war colleges. He brought together tribes, built villages and alliance, and spoke several tribal languages. He traveled around the eastern United States. Unfortunately, many of his relatives were killed by colonists, and they burned down multiple of his villages, including one he built called Prophetstown in Indiana. He assisted the British in the War of 1812 and was killed in the Battle of Thames. One other thing that I'd like to mention about him is that William Sherman, who you've probably heard of as an important Union general in the Civil War, was actually named after him. So his full name was William Tecumseh Sherman. All right. So the next person that I'm going to talk about is someone that I had no idea existed. And to start, I'd just like to say their name, Geronimo. You've probably heard that before, and it was the name of an important Apache leader. He was born on June 16, 1829 in Arizona. When he grew up, his people were at war with Mexico, the United States, and two neighboring indigenous tribes. He was given the name Goakla, one who yawns at birth, but we're uncertain of how he got the nickname Geronimo. In 1872, the U.S. government created a reservation for Geronimo's people, but Geronimo escaped it multiple times. On May 17, 1885, Geronimo led other Apaches out of the reservation, raiding various villages along the way. Unfortunately, he was forced to surrender in March, but he managed to evade capture until he turned himself in on September 4th of that same year. He ended up at the Fort Skill Reservation and died there of pneumonia on February 17, 1909. She was born July 14, 1845. She's part African American and part Missyaga, which was part of the Obijiwa or Chippewa band. She was orphaned at about nine years old and sent to live with two of her aunts. Well, with her older brother. When she grew older, she attended Oberlin College in Ohio. That was where she learned to draw and made her first sculptures. However, two white students accused Lewis of poisoning them. She was beaten because of this, but she was never legally punished and was ex it's extremely likely that she was innocent. Because of this, she was later accused of stealing multiple items, which she was never prosecuted for, and it's probable that she was also innocent in these cases. But because of this, she wasn't ever able to officially graduate from her Oberlin. Then she turned and moved to Boston, where she became a self-taught sculptor. She traveled to Rome in 1866 and became somewhat famous there. I don't know if you've heard of this sculpture, but Forever Free is one of her most famous sculptures. It depicts two free slaves, and it's something that she made while she was in Rome. In 1870, she returned to the United States, and she died September 17, 1907, in London of Bright's disease. It's believed. Many of us have probably heard of the case Loving v. Virginia, and I would like to talk about one of the most important people in this case, Mildred Loving who was born July 2nd, 1939, in Central Point, Virginia. She was nicknamed String Bean as a child because she was so thin. She was part African American and part Cherokee. Her maiden name was Mildred Jetter. When she was about 18, she married Richard Loving, a white man. Unfortunately, their marriage was illegal in Virginia and many other states because they weren't the same race. They decided to get married in Washington, D.C., and they then returned to Virginia, their home. They were arrested in Virginia because their marriage wasn't legal there. So they moved to DC and they had three kids there, Donald, Peggy, and Sydney. But they missed their home. So they brought their case all the way up to the Supreme Court, which ruled that it was illegal to outlaw biracial marriage. And that is part of the story of Loving Me, Virginia. Mildred Loving died on May 2nd, 2008. Many little kids have dreamed of going to space. And now we're going to talk about someone who really did go to space. John Harrington, 
was the first enrolled member of a Native American tribe to go to space uh, when he went um, to the International Space Station via the shuttle Endeavour on November 23, 2002. Harrington was born September 14, 1958, and he is, I believe, still alive. He was part of the Chickasaw tribe. When he first attended college, he actually dropped out after two years, but then he returned and got his bachelor's in mathematics. He then became an aviator in the Navy and got his master's in aeronautical engineering. After joining NASA, he had to train for two years before he could enter space. After he did, he retired from NASA in 2005. He continues to encourage children, especially Indigenous children, to explore the STEM field and works to get more STEM education out there to those children. Next, I'm going to talk about someone who recently just made history as the first Native American Cabinet Secretary. Deb Haaland is currently the Secretary of the Interior for President Biden. She was born in 1960 in Winslow, Arizona. Eventually, she attended New Mexico University, where she studied English and graduated in 1994. Her daughter, Soma, was born right after she graduated. After a few years, she attended law school at the University of New Mexico, where she graduated in 2006. She volunteered for the Obama campaign in 2008 and became his Native American vote director for his re-election campaign. In 2018, she became one of the first two Native American women elected to Congress when she was elected to the House of Representatives for New Mexico. In 2021, she was confirmed as the Secretary of the Interior for President Biden. As the Secretary of Interior, she plans to create a unit focused on pursuing justice for murdered and missing Indigenous women, and she plans to focus on addressing climate change. So with that, that is the end of the information in this video today. I'm also super excited to announce that hopefully everyone that I mentioned in this video will be getting their own biography video so I can tell you just a little bit more about each and every one of these amazing people. So that is where we're going to be going for the next many videos. I would also like to say that if you have any topic suggestions or any other Indigenous Americans that you think I should talk about in this series, please fill out the topic suggestions form that I have linked in the description of this video. You can also comment on this video or you can email me at abby at historyofus at gmail.com. I hope you enjoyed this video. After this, there will be the sources that I used in this video. If you would like to see where all this information comes from. And thank you so much for watching, and have a great night.